let us understand how we can take care of list partitioning of tables. It is primarily used to create partitions based upon the values. If we take the example of users where we have user role, it have values such as U or A. We might want to get all the users with U as part of one partition and all the users with A as part of another partition. In those scenarios, we can leverage list partitioning. Here are the steps involved in creating tables using list partition strategy. First, we have to create table using partition by list. Then we might have to add default and value specific partitions. Then we can validate by inserting data into the table. Also, if we feel that some of the partitions are not relevant, we can detach and drop them from the table. Now let's go ahead and create partition table. We will talk about how to add partitions and also how to get data into those partitions as part of the subsequent topics. Let's focus on the creating partition table first. The table which we will be creating is nothing but users underscore part. It contains same columns as users. We will partition based upon user role field. This is how we should be able to connect to the database. These two things will take care of connecting our JupyterHub environment to the database whenever we run commands using percentage SQL or percentage percentage SQL magic. This will take care of dropping the table users if at all it exists. We are just creating the users table and using this table as reference, we want to create a partition table called as users underscore part. Rest of the stuff is same. Only difference between the users table create statement and users underscore part create table statement is this partition by list clause. As part of the partition by list clause, we can specify the field on which we want to partition the data. We want to partition the data on user role. That's why we have specified user role here. Now, if you want to add additional indexes on users part table, such as unique index on uh, email ID or regular index on email ID, you should be able to use create index statement like this. Even though user email ID is not a partition field, still it will create an index and it is nothing but a global index. Now, when it comes to inserting data into a partition table, it should at least have one partition. If you do not have at least one partition, it will fail. Typically, we start with default partition so that if there are records which does not match the criteria, all the records will go to the default partition. However, default partition is not the one which is required. It has to at least have one partition. As long as we have one partition, as long as we have values matching that partition, we should be able to insert the data. But with other values which does not match the partition criteria, those insert statements will fail. So in this case, we will just see what type of error we will get when we insert the data into a partition table when we even do not have one partition defined on the table. Let's run this insert statement and you can see the error here. It says check violation, no partition of relation users underscore part found for row. The detailed information is nothing but partition key of the failing row contains user role equal to U. As we do not have corresponding partition for U for user role, it failed. So it's not just a matter of creating the partition table. We also need to have specific partition defined to get data into the table. As long as we do not have partitions, we will not be able to get data into the table when the table is partitioned. As we have successfully created the partition table, let us understand how we can actually change the table by adding partitions to it and also how we can get the data into those partitions using the relevant insert commands.